Okay, today we're going to see if we can learn a thing or two about rectangular hyperbolas. You might also see this written as rectangular hyperbole. Uh, it's exactly the same thing, uh, same concept. So here we've got a couple of equations that represent rectangular hyperbolas, and we've got a couple of graphs. But before we get to them, I want to pose, I want to pose a problem to you. Imagine if I said to you, I'd like you to give me two numbers which, when multiplied together, equal 1. And let's use two variables to indicate these two numbers. Let's say they're x and y. So the problem is I want you to give me a value for x and a value for y such that when these two are multiplied together, I get 1. Well, you might say we could have x equals 1 and y equals 1. Then we get 1 times 1 equals 1. That makes sense. And then I'd ask you to give me different values. And then you'd say, well, we could, we could give x the value of 2. And then in order to, to have this value of, of 1 over the side here, we'd have to give y the value of half, because 2 times half equals 1. And I'd say, OK, give me another value. So then you'd say, OK, we could have 3 times a third. That also equals 1. And then I might ask you for some more values. And after a while, you then say, oh, hang on, we've got positive values. But I suppose we could also have negative values. We could have minus 1 times minus 1. Put this in brackets. So a negative times a negative is a positive. So these numbers would fit. We could have negative 2 times negative half equals 1. In fact, there are infinitely many values that we could substitute in for x and y here you need in order to work out this problem. One interesting thing is if I said make either of these zero, so if I said if, if I give you x equals zero, what would you what would you substitute in for y in order to make this equal to one? You wouldn't be able to solve that problem. Because anything multiplied by zero, any number that we can put in here, we'd we'd get we can never get a one or, or any non-zero value because everything anything multiplied by zero is zero. So this is an interesting observation and, and this, this relationship between x and y is really what we're going to be examining with rectangular hyperbole. Instead of writing this as x times y equals one or another way of saying that is x y equals one, we're going to write it as y equals something. So we're going to divide both sides by x and here have y equals 1 over x. This is the equation of a rectangular hyperbole and this is the equation that we've examined here. And this written equation to the right is graphed so we can see that some of these these two values that, that we examined here say 1 and 1, 2 and a half, 3 and a third, we can actually identify these on the graph. When x equals 1, y equals 1. Well that's this point here when x equals 2, y equals half. Well, it's going to be 2 units to the right and half a unit up. So it's going to be this point. What about x equals 3, y equals a third? Well, it's going to be this point. So pretty much by, by, doing, by doing this problem, we've drawn up a table of values uh, for this hyperbola. We can also do the negative ones at x equals minus 1, y equals minus 1. At x equals minus 2, y equals minus a half. And we could keep on going. Notably, if we were to consider x equals zero, this curve isn't defined at x equals zero. In fact, this curve has an asymptote at x equals zero. In fact, it's a vertical asymptote. Because x equals zero, so in other words, this line here, I'll draw it in a dotted line, x equals 0, what happens is that as x approaches 0, and what we'll do is we'll say, we'll put a plus sign here. Now this plus sign isn't an indice, it's just a, a different type of term terminology, meaning that as x approaches 0 from above, or as x approaches 0 from the positive direction, in other words, as we get closer and closer to 0, from this direction here, x values that are positive but very close to zero, our y values, um, they, they skyrocket up and in fact they tend to infinity. In other words, as x goes to zero from above, 
y goes to infinity. What these means is as I take smaller and smaller x values that are almost zero, the y values are going to get larger and larger. So for instance, if I were to input 1 tenth, which is a value close to zero here, in order to retain this relationship of x times y equals 1, you'd have to say, oh, y must equal 10. If I had, say, 1 over 1,000, you'd have to associate that with a y value of 1,000. In other words, as we get closer and closer to zero, we retrieve higher and higher y values from this rectangular hyperbola. And consequently, we have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. We also have a horizontal asymptote. And the horizontal asymptote is a horizontal line where uh, the curve gets closer and closer to this line, but never actually touches or intersects with this line. And the horizontal asymptote here is the line y equals zero. So this is the line y equals zero. It's the, it's the x-axis, in other words. So what happens is if we, if we input higher and higher x values, so x values that are close to infinity, so we might have a thousand or even a million. Here we're going to, to retrieve y values that are, that are positive, but they're very, very small. They're almost zero. So for instance, we're going to get one over a thousand and one over a million. And those are very, very small y values. However, we're never going to get a y value equal to zero. In other words, the horizontal asymptote here is the horizontal line y equals zero. And what we can say is that as x goes to infinity, we have y goes to zero. Now noticeably, this behavior only describes this top right part of the curve. In other words, to the right and above the origin. However, to the bottom left, we have some similar behavior going on. In fact, we can see here that as x approaches zero, from below, another way of saying that is for very small negative values of x, as x tends to zero, so in other words, as x gets closer and closer to zero, as our x values get closer and closer to zero, y values become very large and negative. Or a way of writing that is as x goes to zero, and we'll put a minus sign here to indicate m negative values of x, we have y goes to negative infinity. Now this is, this is the same asymptote in both cases. Uh, it's, it's tending, this curve is tending to the vertical line x equals zero, so y asymptote, but two different types of behavior here. Similarly, this horizontal asymptote, we could say as x becomes very, very large and negative, so as x goes to minus infinity, we have y values that are very, very small. In fact, we have y values that go to zero, but they, they never quite reach zero, they just tend to zero. So this is another statement we can make. In other words, there are two asymptotes for this graph. We have a vertical asymptote of x equals zero and a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. We'll just spend a brief moment examining this second hyperbola. This is y equals minus one over x. So this hyperbola is associated with a different problem. Instead of saying x times y equals one, here if I gave you the problem, what do we have for different x and y values if I give you x times y equals minus one? Well, here you might say we could have x equals one and y equals minus one. That would give us minus one because a positive times a negative is a negative. Or we could have x equals minus one times y equals one equals minus one. Or you could have minus half and two. That would equal minus one. Or minus two and half equals minus one. Uh, you could have a whole lot of different values and all of these values would be similarly associated with values here. So we could graph this one. This is x equals one, y equals minus one. So x equals one, y equals minus one. That would be here. We've got x equals minus one, y equals one. That's here x equals minus half, y equals two, that would be here. x equals minus two, y equals half, 
So we could continue assessing this problem, but we'd find a similar result to what we'd found up here. We'd find that the graph is very similar. It's simply being reflected in the y-axis. We have exactly the same asymptotes as we had before. We can clearly see that x equals zero is an asymptote and y equals zero is an asymptote. And that's because for very, very large values of x, both positive and negative, we have y values that are very small and tending to zero. When, and when x is uh, getting closer and closer to zero and is negative, we have y values that tend to infinity. Finally, when x is very, very small and positive, as it gets smaller, we have y values that tend to minus infinity. So these are two types of rectangular hyperbolas. Um, that's the, the basic idea of what they represent and their graphical form.